My Three Sons, a true classic sitcom from yesteryear, following the lives of widower Steve Douglas and his three boys. You see, his three sons. This series was a cornerstone of situational family programming, beginning on ABC and then it moved to CBS after ABC declined its option because of the additional cost of shooting in color. So with the move came a new version of My Three Sons. At its best, there was never a dull moment with the three boys, and audiences enjoyed watching Steve handle all the growing tots. The swapping of the seasoned familial housekeeper, an adopted son, a stepdaughter, wives, and much more. I'm your host Nostalgic Nick, and today we're checking out the cast of My Three Sons to see what all those sons got into after they moved out of the Douglas house. If you enjoy our content, smash that thumbs up icon to show support and subscribe to the channel so you never miss a memory. Fred McMurray. Steve Douglas is the Mai, a widower and aeronautical engineer navigating the highs and lows of raising his children as a single parent, kind of. He had some help from Bub and then Charlie for the later seasons. But Fred was the heart of the show, delivering very tender moments. Advising his kids or explaining something to them, he really came across as someone truly attached to these children. Fred McMurray began acting all the way back in 1929. His aunt was actually a film actress too, named Faye Holderness. And through his early career, he co-starred with the leading ladies of the time, Katherine Hepburn and Alice Adams. Joe Joan Crawford in Above Suspicion, but he became one of Hollywood's most sought after actors when he starred in Billy Wilder's crime drama, Double Indemnity in 1944, possibly the best film noir ever made. Not many actors booked roles as easily as Fred. He reteamed with Billy Wilder for the Oscar winning film, The Apartment. That same year, My Three Sons kicked off. Many people originally thought the show was a Disney one because he was linked to so many mouse company productions, highlighted by the Shaggy Dog. My Three Sons was actually one of his final roles, and he filmed it his way, literally, using the McMurray method where he would do all of his scenes in 65 non-consecutive days, two big chunks. So the rest of the cast would often just act without their dad there. This meant the regulars got haircuts once a week, and guest stars would sometimes have to return months later to complete the episode. All the kitchen scenes would be done together, then all the scenes upstairs, and so on. Of his four post-Douglas patriarch roles, his final was 1978's The Swarm. He retired and moved to his remote ranch. Fred was widely known as one of the more frugal actors in Hollywood. Stories circulated of his famous hard-boiled egg brown bag lunches and stingy tips. And this was the 1960s when he had been collecting mighty fine paychecks for decades. Fred McMurray was also a lifetime heavy smoker and developed throat cancer in the late 70s but he battled it for years before finally passing away in 1991 at the age of 83. William Frawley. Hey, hey, don't hey, go hey, out there. Well, how am I gonna get the paper? The sky hook? Bub is Steve's father-in-law who helps raise the sons for the first five seasons. The black and white era, if you will. He serves as the housekeeper and it reunited him with Fred McMurray from the movie Car 99 25 years earlier. One of Frawley's early highlights included co-starring with The Duke in The Fighting Sea Bees in 1944. And then three years later, he was part of the holiday classic Miracle on 34th Street. By 1951, he had appeared in over a hundred films. And that's when he learned the legendary Desi Arnaz and Lucille Ball were creating a new comedy series. And after some convincing, he landed the role of Fred Mertz. Desi and Lucy were well aware of William's talents, but CBS was unsure of the choice. You see, William had a habit of showing up to work in some state of drunkenness. So Desi's one condition was to forfeit the drinking at work. Done and done, and he and Desi became very close friends. Frawley was so accustomed to filming I Love Lucy in order that he was one of the more disgruntled actors forced into the McMurray method. Although that was not the reason he left the show. That was a health issue as the production could no longer attain insurance on the aging actor. He really enjoyed his time on the show and to make matters worse, he was replaced by an actor whom he despised. William Frawley passed away the following year in 1966 at age 79 from a severe heart attack. 
Tim Considine. Mike Douglas is Steve's oldest son, who eventually marries his fiancée Sally Ann and is written off the show. And the program never mentioned him again. Instead, they added another son to keep the three thing going. Tim made his acting debut in 1953 at 13 years old, co-starring with a true clown playing a clown, acting alongside Red Skelton in The Clown. You may remember his Disney stints, like The Adventures of Spin and Marty, where he played Spin, as well as two Hardy Boys series where he played Frank Hardy. Tell me in the comments if you grew up watching these. After My Three Sons, Tim guest starred on Bonanza, a two-parter of Gunsmoke, and then was the lucky ducky who got slapped by George C. Scott in the 1970 war epic Patton. Perhaps lucky, as the slap did take several takes to get right. Ouch. Tired of getting slapped by the entertainment biz in his adult life, Tim was an automobile historian, photographer, and writer with a specialty in motorsports. He also showed up for fan conventions and spoke at panels for My Three Sons. Sadly, Tim Considine died in March of 2022 at the age of 81. William Demarest. Well, somebody better start thinking around here and it looks like it's gonna have to be me. Charlie is the younger brother of Bub and Steve's uncle-in-law who joins the show to replace the ill Frawley. The two Williams were acting rivals and the tension could be felt on set, at least for the transition period. Demarest began his lengthy Hollywood career back in the 20s. Some of his earlier films include 1941's The Lady Eve and Sullivan's Travels. Prior to his Charlie, he enjoyed TV success as Jeb Gain on season six of Tales of Wells Fargo in the early 60s. The final project he was in was a TV movie trying to revive the old 50s program The Millionaire. This was in 1978. This fellow was a fine character actor with a quiet intensity and comic timing that kept him employed into his 80s. He was nominated for an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor for the biopic The Jolson Story. The project he is most proud of is My Three Sons. Demarest died in 1983 at the age of 91, but from vaudeville to boxing, this guy could really do it all. Don Grady. Next up is the middle child, Robbie Douglas, who enjoyed a marriage himself to his college sweetheart, Katie. But Don appeared in every episode but one. Grady stepped onto the scene in the late 50s, first becoming a mouseketeer along with 23 other lucky kids, then transitioning into guest appearances on some shows, like three one-offs of The Restless Gun and two of The Rifleman. That took him right to the Douglas clan, but his role on My Three Sons was one of his final ones. He did make one resurgence in 1983 with two episodes of Simon and Simon. He never left Hollywood, he just transitioned into another department, music. He's composed for various films and TV shows. It all began with My Three Sons and culminated when he wrote the theme song for The Phil Donahue Show, which we heard a lot, over a thousand episodes actually. We've actually already talked about his sister on this channel too, as Lonnie O'Grady played Mary Bradford, the oldest Bradford girl for five seasons of Eight is Enough. Sadly, her older brother Don died in June of 2012 at the age of 68 from myeloma. Tina Cole. Katie is Robbie's wife and Steve's daughter-in-law. And if you thought she looked familiar, it's because she is inherently a member of the King Family Singers. Hate you. Don't make it bad. Her mother is Yvonne King, and she is the niece of the King sisters. So Tina was a part of the King Cousins, before becoming the director of the Sacramento Children's Theater. She has semi-revisited acting, appearing in the movie Reawakened in 2020. Today she is 78 years old and still occasionally does interviews. And if you thought she and Don had great chemistry on the show, it's because they did enjoy a long relationship during it as well. Stanley Livingston. Chip Douglas is Steve's youngest son, at least in the beginning of the show. He and Fred are the only actors to appear in every episode. And it's really cool to see him grow in 12 seasons of work and actual life. 
Heck, in the final season, even Chip gets to marry his high school sweetheart, Polly. After Chip was through, he did some voice work for Hanna-Barbera, beginning with the Roman Holidays and then Deblin. At 18 years old, he married a go-go dancer, Sandra Livingston, and the six-year marriage ended in 1974 after they had a daughter, Samantha Livingston. In 2015, he remarried to an actress named Paula Drake. The two are still married today. In his later years, he spent time as a producer and director in LA. In the early 2000s, he was directing children's shows for PBS. Today, Stanley is 71 years old, and check out his website if you want to see interviews and upcoming panel appearances. Now we go to Stanley's TV and real life little brother, Barry Livingston. I haven't been around very much, but even I know that when you start telling us about personalities and junk, the girls have gotta be a wipeout. Ernie is the son that Steve adopts into the fam and was Stanley's real younger brother. And this guy actually had the best acting career of any of the kids. Barry began acting on the adventures of Ozzie and Harriet just like his older bro did. Or maybe you remember him from that season one episode of The Dick Van Dyke Show. And Barry got to be a part of some big film productions too, like 1987's Masters of the Universe and 1992's The Nut House. And he is very much still at it today. He played Gary Potter for three episodes of Bosch and then reprised the role for Bosch Legacy in 2022. In October of 2011, Barry released his autobiography, The Importance of Being Ernie. It details his career from My Three Sons to Mad Men and beyond. And we can't wait to see this 68-year-old actor for years to come. All right, that's my two cents on My Three Sons. So now it's your turn. Who was your favorite son in My Three Sons? Did you prefer William Frawley or William Number 2? Did this classic sitcom overstay its welcome on air after 12 long years? Please get in the comments and tell me everything you remember about this legendary show. If you enjoyed our rewind, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel for more throwbacks like this. But from all of us here at Do You Remember, we want to thank you for watching.